While the principles of tuning a turbocharged engine are no different to a naturally aspirated one, particularly for a novice tuner faced with tuning a high boost turbo engine, this can be daunting. In this free lesson, we're going to see some tricks and tips to let you dial in your tune on a turbocharged engine quickly and easily, or most importantly, ensuring engine safety and reliability. Now we've looked at the steady state tuning process and how we can apply that on a turbocharged engine. However, we do need to be a little bit sensible about how we apply steady state tuning and what we're hoping to achieve. Uh, if we've got an engine that runs a relatively low boost pressure on the wastegate spring setting, like our Toyota Turbocharged Toyota 86 that we're using for these examples. In that case, there's no reason not to tune all the way through to wide open throttle to our minimum wastegate spring pressure level in steady state. And there's a very good chance that we're going to use all of that range of the engine's operation quite regularly when we're actually driving it. This is going to give us the most accurate results in terms of air fuel ratio and ignition timing when we're off the dyno and we're actually driving driving the car. If on the other hand though we've got an engine that is equipped with a very high boost pressure uh, for its wastegate spring pressure, let's say for example that the minimum boost pressure that we can achieve is somewhere in the region of perhaps 20 or 22 psi, somewhere around about 240 to 250 kPa, then we may want to adapt our tuning procedure in steady state slightly. The reason for this is it's unlikely, first of all, that we're going to uh, use all of that range of operation uh, in normal, normal driving situations. Let's have a look at our AFR target map. And I've drawn in here uh, a red line representing the likely sort of boost curve we'd expect to see relative to engine RPM. Now in this sort of engine, we're likely to still be using the vacuum area for our cruise operation and we're also going to move up into positive boost pressure as we've already seen during normal cruise operation. Uh, however, we're going to find that particularly at higher RPM, in this case let's look at 4000 RPM where the engine is capable of, of making almost its full uh, 22 psi of boost pressure. We're going to find that there's this area here uh, at the higher range of the boost pressure the engine can achieve, which we're very unlikely to be able to operate in under steady state operation. And the reason for this is that as we open the throttle further and the engine makes more power and torque, what happens is the engine also produces more exhaust gas energy which helps spool and drive the turbo faster. So what we find is that there is a certain point whereby when we're actually driving the car, we'll find that the engine will tend to transition very quickly through uh, this particular area here at higher RPM and uh, higher boost pressure. We're not going to be able to sit uh, steady state in this sort of operating area. In this instance I would normally concentrate on my steady state tuning up to around about 200 kPa or one bar of positive boost pressure. So I would be focusing my energy in this region that I'm just drawing here. So again we're moving up to around about 4500 RPM or two thirds of our engine rev limiter. But we're not going to be worrying about the very high boost areas down at these RPMs, sort of three, four, four and a half thousand RPM. So we're going to be focusing our steady state tuning process up to around about 200 kPa. Now that leaves us with an untuned area and how do we approach that? Well the next step with these sorts of engines is to transition straight into doing wide open throttle ramp runs. Now that sounds on the face of it a little bit scary because obviously we don't have uh, an idea or a shape to our fuel and ignition tables at wide open throttle at these higher RPM areas, uh, in this case from what I've drawn from probably about 3,500 RPM and above. So the process is to uh, build up very slowly with our ramp runs. So we would start by moving through the areas we have tuned in steady state up to around about 3000 RPM and 
we can see that we've tuned in steady state there so we know uh, just like our normal procedure that our fuel and ignition timing will be correct. Then we can start moving through into the untuned areas very slowly and building up a picture of our fuel and ignition timing as we go. Now once we've got the engine run running all the way through under wide open throttle conditions uh, we can start to look at this area that we've missed here so we can we can look at our uh, sort of higher boost area between 3,000 and 4,500 rpm and we can address these areas. Now while the engine's only going to transition through these areas very briefly, very quickly, uh, we don't need to be quite as precise with the fuel and ignition timing in these areas. We still can't obviously ignore them. So the pr procedure for tuning these areas is to simply interpolate the values that we've found under wide open throttle down to the area that we've tuned in steady state. So in this case, uh, I've suggested around about 200 kPa. We can also use the interpolation function to help us fill out the volumetric efficiency or ignition uh, table values in areas that we haven't tuned. Now, while I recommended that when we start increasing our boost pressure, we do so in 20 kPa increments, and this would allow us to completely fill and accurately tune both our fuel and ignition tables, there's no strict requirement that you must do this. Now, particularly when you're a little bit more confident with your tuning, we may choose to jump ahead slightly and perhaps jump in 40 kPa increments of boost. So in this case let's have a look at our volumetric efficiency table and let's say that we had accurately tuned our fuel at 140 kPa and our next increment was 180 kPa. Now this leaves us with a zone at 160 kPa that we haven't accessed and we haven't tuned. So in this case what we can do is highlight between those cells, between the cells we have tuned and using the interpolate function uh, which is the I key here what will happen is we just simply fill the 160 kPa zone with the uh, value halfway between the two sites we have tuned. Now this might not be absolutely perfect but it's going to be very very close and it's a quick way of helping fill in our fuel and ignition tables in areas that we haven't tuned. So by this point hopefully you've got a better idea of the way we can approach our tuning with a turbocharged engine. Again I want to reiterate that really the way the engine responds to both fuel and ignition timing is no different to a naturally aspirated engine. The only real considerations we need to make are for controlling the heat that the engine is producing and obviously we want to limit the amount of stress that we are placing on the engine where possible. If you do have any further questions, please ask them in the form below and I'll be happy to answer them in the forum. That was just one module taken from our complete practical standalone ECU tuning course. This course is designed to teach you how to tune any aftermarket standalone engine management system from start to finish. We know that particularly for novice tuners it can be daunting when faced with the task of tuning a freshly installed ECU with absolutely no base map or start file. In this course we present you the HPA 10 step process and by breaking the entire tuning process down into 10 bite sized steps, each of those individual steps is relatively quick and easy to complete. By following that process from start to finish, in no time you've got a completely tuned engine that's offering optimal power, optimal torque and most importantly ensuring great engine reliability. By following this 10 step process through you're also going to ensure that you don't overlook any critical steps that could waste time and money or even result in damage to your engine. This course is applicable to any aftermarket standalone engine management system and any combination of engine. To find out more about this course, click the link in the description.